You there, yes, you! Kill that griffin! Stab it in the head! Yes, excellent! Great job! Ladies, gentlemen, and arisen of all ages, I really do love just how deep this game can be when you put your all into it. And of course, while there are tons of different playstyles that are more regular, more expected, and more intended by the developers, it's always fun to find some weird ways to play the game and really just push them to the absolute maximum. So today, I wanted to try, quite simply, not doing any damage myself. Put simply, this is the guide to the most offensively powerful on setup for a full party. And while you can take less extreme versions of this to make your general gameplay in any party that you have much stronger, just taking the ideas without going full on with it, this is going to just be the peak of it all if you really push it hard, which involves the player themselves acting essentially just as a support, doing no damage themselves. First though, let's talk about the pawns before we talk about how we'll be making them even better first and foremost, is your thief. Thieves are capable of the highest damage per second in the game, and it's easily achievable even under the control of the AI, so just putting the right abilities on them makes them a menace in almost any situation, at least offensively speaking. Obviously, the only pawn that I have full control over is my own main pawn, but you can also use advanced search settings in any rift zone to find pawns that at least somewhat match the setup. For the thief pawn skills, then, for general gameplay, you want formless feint in one slot, then skull splitter in the other three. The reason for this is when you use the go command Command for your pawns, they will specifically try to use a weapon skill. If they have less choices of which to cast, which skill they use is going to be a lot more predictable. So in this setup, if we say go, the pawns will try to use Skull Splitter the vast majority of the time, at least if they are in a position to actually do so. The augments that you want on your Thief pawns, if again you had literally anything at your disposal, would be Subtlety from Thief for reduced targeting from enemies, Verb for bonus strength, also from Thief, Metal for physical defense from Fighter, Endurance for stamina management from Archer, Lethality for bonus damage to enemy weak spots, also from Archer, and Exaltation from Mage for even more stamina management. Then past that, you generally just want the best thief gear that you can get on this pawn, with my personal recommendation being to have two different pairs of elemental daggers so you can cover different elements on each of your two thief pawns, as ideally the setup will be running two of the exact same thief build, just with different elements on them for a little bit more coverage for different enemies, as you're going to be relying on your pawns to do all the damage. Then we have your third pawn, which is going to be your Sorcerer. This character has one single singular purpose, and it's called Augural Flare. There are tons of fun things that Sorcerer Pawns could have, and they could do. If they do get a tornado or a meteor shower cast off, then the world will get pretty much annihilated in front of them. But they have incredibly long cast times on those skills, and that's sort of why we have the Thieves here instead, is to provide the high damage in a very consistent way, rather than a much less consistent way from Sorcerers. So the Sorcerer will actually act more as a support, specifically for dense group fighting, or specifically for single target, because the Sorcerer has no skills equipped but Flare, and Flare's purpose is to make the single target damage of the thieves expand to be explosive in larger groups that are densely packed, or in single target, just high hit rate into Augural Flare does a ridiculous amount of damage to a single enemy. The result of this is that there's just a decently high response rate of when you press the Go Pawn command that the Sorcerer of the group will cast Augural Flare if they're able to. If the thieves also then use Skull Splitter, that is going to be enough damage to do most of a Drake's health in one maneuver. The thing is, the AI isn't always great, sometimes they won't do what you want, but I've tried a variety of different pawn setups with theoretically high potential, and this is the one that by far had the most actual consistency in practice. Sometimes the kills were lightning quick if they did a couple of combos correctly, sometimes things took just a little bit longer, but the important part is that things were dying pretty consistently and effectively, and even when the AI was really having its worst moments, we were not dying. No member of the party was really dying, never fully going out of the world, because your Arisen themselves will be playing the role of a perfect support, and doing it in a really difficult way for any to actually beat through. For your Sorcerer Augments, though, before we get to that, anything that boosts damage or stamina is good for them, but because Augural Flare scales more with number of hits than with specific stats, the Augments are less important on that pun. So let's talk about the setup for your Arisen yourself. The absolutely ideal way to play this is with the Warfare vocation, letting you mix in around multiple vocation skills to build a sort of ultimate support for how we are functioning. But if you want an earlier game option for this type of thing, I'd recommend just playing as a fighter and replacing one of your Thief pawns with a healing mage. That way you can use yourself completely just to draw enemy aggro and keep the thief and sorcerer free to do whatever they want. But once you have warfare up and running on your character, you can start putting together some really nasty combos. As you play warfare, you will eventually unlock the zeal augment. This is an augment that lowers the stamina cost of weapon skills, and this actually hits a specific breakpoint for this build. It is playable without zeal, but zeal puts it over the edge into being damn near unstoppable, so let's talk about why. The main skill that you will ever cast with this 
this is going to be from Mystic Spearhand, and it is called Mirror Shield, which is an upgraded version of Mirror Vesture. This creates a shield around yourself and any nearby ally that just makes you completely immune to damage while it's up. You will still stagger and fall over if you are actually hit by the attack, but no actual damage will penetrate the shield. The footage that I am showing you in all of this is with the unupgraded version of the skill, which lasts about half as long on the duration as the upgraded version. So imagine the extra freedom possible gained by unlocking this and having to cast the shield half as often. The base version is Mystic Spearhand rank 4, the upgraded one is rank 6. With Zeal, the skill is at a sort of perfect place where you can keep it up 100% of the time, and even weave in some other weapon skills here or there with the upgraded version too. Then your second vocation of use within this is going to be Magic Archer. The Spearhand shield prevents damage in 90% of situations, I would say, but Magic Archer has access to Recovery Arrow, which can not only heal allies and the Arisen themselves for any damage that it gets through these shields extremely easily and consistently, but also importantly when fully charged, can even revive downed allies at range, which makes it an incredible all-rounder support skill. Between these two then, you are nearly impossible to kill unless you get greedy with your third slot ability, really. Options for this then are Shield Drum from Fighter for purposefully dragging aggro away from enemies, Augur Flare from Sorcerer just to have more manual control of the flare itself so you can do it and even free up your Sorcerer pawn slot, honestly. Or if you want to get a bit looser with the concept and allow damage to technically come from the Arisen themselves, even if that isn't the point of the skill, there's also Vim Taking and Life Taking Arrow from Magic Archer that deal damage and heal in a piercing line, which is quite lovely as a support skill, and there's also Bartizan and Fortalice from Magic Archer 2 that give a singular hit blocking barrier to one ally per shot, but it also counters that hit dealing damage that scales with the hit that was blocked, so fantastic against bosses especially. Generally speaking though, Mirror Shield and Recovery Shot will take most of your attention while you're playing this way. Then past that, let's talk Augments for our Arisen then. You want Provocation from Fighter to make enemies more likely to target you than they are your pawns. Zeal, as we mentioned from Warfare, for weapon skill, stamina cost reduction. Sustainment from Magic Archer increases defense and magic defense of all pawns, which is great for this. Ascendancy from Magic Archer increases their magic and strength too. Beatitude increases the power of curative magics, which does include Recovery Arrow. And then finally, Exaltation from Mage as well for the stamina management that it gives you, as stamina is just a major requirement to keep everyone nice and healthy while playing this way. Alternatively, you can work in some more personal defensive augments as you are trying to make the enemies attack you instead of the pawns, things like metal for bonus defense, intrepidity for reduced loss gauge accumulation, or vitality for bonus maximum health are all great for that purpose, coming from fighter and warrior respectively. With that then, let's talk about the final extra special sauce of this setup, which is your weapons. Obviously you want weapons capable of using each skill that you have equipped, and obviously the fourth weapon skill is going to be rearmament no matter what, allowing you to actually change between the weapons. But we actually do have one weapon equipped that isn't even responsible for any of our weapon skills, which is an Archer Staff from Sorcerer. The reason for this is sort of twofold. Levitate is, of course, fantastic for traversal in any situation. It's just lovely for that purpose. But more importantly, the core skill for Archer Staffs is Galvanize, which is a manual sped up stamina regeneration if you hold down the button. With this implemented correctly, with Zeal in your augments as well, and you time this well effectively, you will never be able to actually run out of stamina with this build if you're paying attention, even while applying tons of shields with 100% uptime and healing to buff your allies up too. Honestly, you can even just fully forego any inputs aside from movement to dodge attacks from enemies if you want to play it a little bit dangerously. The Thief Pawns have the auto dodge skill on them, which should be active most of the time, even if they're controlled by AI, and they should use their weapon skills relatively naturally too. I just like being at least a little bit more active, even if I'm not necessarily applying the damage myself. On one final note then, this is the Ring of Disfavor. It makes enemies more likely to target you than they are to target your pawns. You can get one of these from Guaranteed Place, and there's a couple more that you can find just around the world in the wild, and having both of your ring slots be two of these with the fighter augment as well makes enemies target you the vast majority of the time already, even without any other effort, which is great for this purpose. One of these, to be more specific, is a guaranteed quest reward from the Phantom Oxcart quest as a lead on at least one of these rings. And that just about does it then everyone, a fully optimized and busted pawn-based party setup, letting you play Dragon's Dogma 2 like a very strange Pokemon fan game, where most of your gameplay is applying buffs or spamming the go pawn command to try and make them use their skills. Sure, it's not as effective as just being the damage source as the player yourself and having full control over everything, but again, this is just an exercise in limit testing. And while most of you probably aren't going to follow this perfectly to the letter, drop your current build and go full pawn mode right now, I do hope that you've learned a number of things throughout this discussion to help just make your pawns a bit more effective in general, and maybe help make them make your journey even easier as a result of it. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.